Yeah, I mean, I guess it's probably the best part of three years, which um, seems to have gone very, very quickly. But um, yeah, met met through some some people that we're we're working with and um, had had a chance to sit down with Mark and Stan and the guys at Sports Data Labs. Um, you know, they went through um, the, the 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 sort of the thing that they're starting and and they made a real sort of compelling case. Um, it really fits in with um, you know where we see ourselves as as a sport in terms of the innovation side of things, in terms of trying new things, and uh, and they they um, you know were at the same sort of stage of, of bringing something new to the market, which we find extremely interesting. So um, yeah, that's that's sort of where the the relationship started, and it's sort of gone on from there, really. The relationship with the PSA for us started in late 2017. Um, they were always an organization that was high on my list in terms of groups that we wanted to work with. Um, you know, ever since my time at IMG and the NBA, um, they were always seen as a technology leader um, and always a group that, you know, we saw as being at the forefront of using new types of technology to really push the envelope in pro sports. So when we had an opportunity to meet with uh, the chief commercial officer, Tommy Burden, as well as Lee, we jumped on it. Um, so we met with them in Manchester in late 2017, did a quick live demo with them. Um, they gave us the opportunity to do a, a in-match live test in New York the following month. Um, you know, we had done thousands of hours of testing and preparation for that moment, um, but had never done a live event. Um, so that was really exciting for us. Um, the success of that test then turned into a three event pilot. Um, we were able to send data to broadcast for the first time the following month in Chicago, which again was awesome for us. Um, and we were able to turn that then into a year long partnership with the tour. I just think it's one of the things that's probably missing from, uh, from the sort of sports um, data side of things. Um, you know, we all watch sport on, on, a, on a regular basis and the amount of data that's out there now from a viewer's perspective is obviously very extensive, but I think that you know we think that the the next stage is 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 really trying to drill down into the individuals and the athletes and the physicality and the the real stresses that the athletes go through in in order to entertain us. Obviously, you know there's there's little things out there in terms of you know the distances that people cover and the speed and and all that side of things, but I think that. You know the biometric data is is something that that is very very interesting and sort of as a former athlete i can i can sort of you know look back and and think of the things that we used to use years ago in order to sort of um improve ourselves um and a lot of that was around you know the the data that was available in those days but but now i think technology and 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 the way that things are going is so much more that we can learn about you know, the, the body and the stresses and the strains and, and, and what these athletes have to go through. And, you know, squash specifically, we, we, we firmly believe that our athletes are amongst the, you know, the, the fittest and strongest athletes on the planet. But I think as a sport, we've got a duty to try and tell that story. Um, and I think, you know, the, the work that the guys at, at SDL are doing and, and the work that we're doing in trying to tell that story is um you know it's it's interesting and it's it's exciting in our opinion investing in player day is important because it's really the next big untapped opportunity for value creation in pro sports uh, both from a commercial and performance standpoint um, athlete data has the ability to tell entirely new stories around what's happening with the athlete and their body in live performances uh, which has tremendous value for all stakeholders um, so bringing the right technologies together in order to be able to tell those stories, I think is paramount to the success um, of the space. With that said, I think one of the biggest challenges that the space has right now is that, um, you know, the sports technology landscape is very fragmented. Um, data is not being collected in game by most organizations. It's not being collected in real time. Um, it's very hard to use multiple sensors and sensing systems. Uh, data sits in silos. Um, and the right commercial structures just aren't in place to maximize the value of data. So I think that's where we sit. Um, we really are that interoperability layer that helps organizations work with multiple sensors, uh, get insights, and create more value for the data that they have. Um, and that's really been the focus for our relationship with the PSA um, in helping really unlock the value of their data. 
I mean, the, the players have been great. Um, I mean, they are always open to, to new things. Uh, we're very, very lucky in that respect. Um, you know, the, the guys at Sports Data Labs and, and PSA, we had a conversation very, very early on. Um, you know, they were very, very clear about the, the direction that they think that this, um, this partnership is going. And we were also very clear and, you know, we were very aligned in the fact that the athletes should be part of this process and should benefit from this um, from this this sort of new venture um, and you know ultimately it's their data you know that the, that we're just capturing and, and making available and they should be the principal um, you know the prin principal beneficiaries of, of of anything that comes from that um, so we were you know in the in the first stage stages we you know we managed to get a good number of players to test the technology to to start gathering the data. But, you know, once we managed to get a number of players and once it became, you know, a pretty sort of set part of our, our broadcast and what we were putting out, you know, we were very keen to, you know, to, to, to pay the players for the, for, the, for the use of their data as much as we possibly could. And obviously that's a, a relatively small, small, small figure in the, in the first instance. But, you know, we, we feel that it's, um, you know, it's, it's very new. It's a new market and we, we feel that the, the only way it's going to go is up. Players have been unbelievable. Um, the support that we've received from both the players and the tour has been tremendous. Um, and we're really obviously grateful for the partnership that we have with both of them. Um, you know, our offering doesn't work without the support of the data owners, which in this case is the players. Um, so to be working with them, improving out our system and offering has been tremendous. And it's really helped SDL, I think, go from point A to point B in pro sports. Um, you know, we're providing value right now to the players in two ways. One is from a performance standpoint, we're providing their in-match data back to them uh, post-match. And then two is from a commercial standpoint, we're helping them monetize their own data. Um, you know, with the player support, we're confident that we're gonna be able to continue to provide more value, both in terms of more insights, um, as well as more monetization opportunities as the space grows. To date, we've been able to distribute $100,000 to the players based on helping them commercialize their data. And that's awesome. Um, you know, we're the first company in pro sports to commercialize athlete data in this way. Um, and it's been amazing to work with kind of this new in-game real-time asset class that has just significant potential for value creation. Um, we started with sponsorship. We were able to secure brands such as AirAsia and Body Armor for the PSA. We've been having a number of discussions in categories that we think are relevant for athlete data, including health analytics companies, cloud storage companies, cybersecurity companies, and the like. So, you know, for us, um, being able to offer such a unique value proposition to the market um, is really, really exciting. You know, but I think, you know, sponsorship aside, the bigger opportunity for us is sports betting. Um, and as it relates to sports betting, we're taking a multi-pronged approach. Um, you know, one path is by taking the data and analytics that we provide to create new products new prop bets such as is player X's heart rate going to be above 180? Yes or no, that's a bet. Um, is player Y going to spend more than N number of minutes in their peak performance zone? Yes or no, that's a bet. So I think the data that we're collecting has the potential to create this multitude of new bet types um, that bookmakers can offer. Um, at the same time, the data can also be used as a bet simulation tool. So providing this information to bettors prior to placing a bet to give them more confidence to then place that bet. The other path is really focused on predictive analytics um, and predicting outcomes. Specifically, athlete data has the potential to provide context as to why any given outcome has occurred. Um, you know, what was happening with the athlete's body that caused the outcome? Um, so it's our belief that by looking at the historical data um, as well as what outcome resulted from that data, um, coupled with the real-time data um, that we're collecting, um, we believe there's a tremendous opportunity for predictive products to be created. We really believe that squash as a, as a betting sport is, is, is really untouched at the moment. We believe it's got, there's a lot of mileage in, in that area. Um, and I think the more that we can add to that in terms of biometric data, I think it's another it's another area of sport which is which is very very interesting and compelling as a viewer um, and I think if we can be at the forefront of that I think that can only do our sport our athletes you know and everyone else involved good 
um, and it's you know it's something that we're lining ourselves up to be in the in the right position to be able to do that. Um, you know we're already having conversations. There's already you know things progressing in 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 the right way. Um, but obviously it's a new, you know, it's a new thing. Um, and it, it, it takes a little bit of time, but we're certainly, um, well positioned to, to, to try and take advantage of it and try and sort of also push the boundaries of what, um, you know, what is typically out there. Um, and that's, you know, where we position our sport in many different aspects. And, um, you know, this is just, just one of them. We believe in the guys at Sports Data Labs. Um, we believe in, in, in the market. We believe in, you know the fact that there's something this is something new and um you know i, I we believe that that you know there's there's so much um there's so much uh, scope for where this can lead not just within sport you know within health in general um you know the fact that we're we're capturing this data from from some of the fittest athletes in sport but you know, when you get an amount of data that, that, that we're now managing to, um, to get, you know, that, that can have benefits in, in many, many other different areas. Um, so, you know, we, we believe in, in the whole process. We believe in, in the people that we're working with. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why, why we've invested in them. Quite honestly, it's humbling that we were selected by the PSA for investment. We worked really, really hard to develop the first in-game real-time solution that could support a global tour across four continents, nine months, and still deliver a consistent and reliable product. The fact that the PSA selected the SDL platform to implement across an entire season, as well as the fact that the PSA selected SDL for investment, was just a huge validation for the company. Um, you know, we're really grateful for the opportunity to have the PSA as an investor and partner, and couldn't be more excited about where our partnership's going. We believe that um, you know there's 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 a bright future for this, and um, like I say, we 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 want to be there at the start. We are there at the start. Um, our athletes are fully involved in the whole process, and they'll be the ones that are really going to benefit from uh, from any of the sort of financial side of of, of their personal data. Um, but I think us as a sport and the profile of our sport will will only go up. Um, it, it, you know, if this. Uh, if this goes the way that we think it will go. So, you know, we, um, we're very excited about where it's going to go. We're not sure as yet how quickly or where, but, you know, we think it's, uh, we think it's going to be great. Our goal is for the SDL and PSA partnership to be the model for how real-time in-game athlete data can be utilized across professional sports. Together, SDL and the PSA have achieved a number of firsts in professional sports, both from a real-time in-game implementation standpoint as well as a commercialization of athlete data standpoint. You know, moving forward, our goal is to really provide as much value as we can to the tour, the players, and most importantly, the fans. That means introducing new sensors and sensing types, as well as new physiological, biomechanical, and location-based metrics. We're really excited to roll out what's next and couldn't be more thrilled to be doing it with a PSA.